I'm so very excited today to share with you my new blender sourdough superfood bread. It's chopped full of incredibly delicious whole grains and in fact contains no flour at all. My family loves it because it tastes incredibly delicious and I love it because it is chock full of superfoods. So let's go ahead and make it together. The only preparation that you need to do ahead of time is to actually soak your whole grains and legumes. We're going to use four incredible superfood grains and legumes, each of which are naturally gluten-free and have incredible superfood profiles. All of the exact amounts are in the description below and also on our website, TamericMeCrazy.com. You can find tons of free recipes over there as well. Despite having wheat in its name, buckwheat is actually completely gluten-free. And then my sorghum grain. Sorghum is a fantastic grain that is just chocked full of protein and vitamins and minerals and very, very healthy for you. Millet. It is also an incredibly healthy grain. Then some garbanzo beans or chickpeas. These are a legume and they are incredibly healthy for you. But don't worry, your bread will not taste like garbanzo bean, I promise. Just give those a little swish around. Cover it with the lid, set it aside, and it'll be ready for you in the morning. If you just want to do this and get it over with and you don't want to soak them overnight or you forgot to soak them overnight, don't worry. Just put them in some very hot water, not quite boiling, but really hot. And within about 45 minutes to an hour, it'll be soft enough to use. It is important to note though that you will need to blend this a lot longer if you haven't soaked them overnight, which will mean it'll get quite hot and it will be important to wait till it cools a bit before you add your sourdough starter. The longer that you soak your grains and legumes, the easier it is to blend. Therefore, it won't get quite as hot. The last thing to do to prep is to feed your sourdough starter. The flavor of this bread is just incredible, but it will be influenced slightly by whatever you choose to feed your sourdough starter the night before. I have a sorghum sourdough starter and I like to feed it sorghum flour, which I grind at home. If you'd like to learn how to do that, check out my video here. And I feed it in a ratio of one part starter to five parts water and five parts flour. If you're wondering why on earth I do this ratio, just check out my quick tips here and it'll explain everything to you. Now the next morning, once it's been soaking overnight, we're just going to strain them out. And then I've got my sourdough starter, which is nice and active, and I'm ready to go. And you can see once they've been soaking overnight, they'll be nice and soft. You'd be able to break open your garbanzo bean or chickpea. And you can see they've expanded a little in size. So we're just going to strain this water out now. So once all of your grains and legumes are strained, then you're just going to add them directly into your blender. This is so easy, you're going to love it. So I'll just pour it right in. And because I have my mise en place ready to go, this is going to be so easy breezy. And then I'm just going to add my water. Now this water, of course, because I'm working with sourdough, has been sitting on my counter. It is tap water, but it's been sitting on my counter for 24 hours at least. I have mine always big container sitting on my counter. The next we're going to add our enrichment, which is olive oil in my case, then some maple syrup. If you're vegan and you don't want to eat maple syrup, you're not comfortable with that, then just go ahead and add in agave syrup or any other sweetener that you prefer. You can just sub it right on in. And then some apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has so many health benefits. And of course, just a little salt. And I use kosher salt. And now we're just going to blend this up on low for about a minute and then slowly increasing to high for about three to five minutes, depending on how long you let your beans and grains soak. If you only soak them for an hour or less, then after about three to five minutes, you'll notice there's a lot of steam coming off. It's going to be very hot. So just be really careful. If I was to add my active sourdough starter, it would just kill all the microorganisms, which would be terrible. So if you just wait about 10 minutes, you'll see that when you touch with your finger, it'll feel just slightly warm to the touch. And that's perfect for a sourdough starter. But if you did soak them overnight, you'll notice that after about a minute, 
It'll start to incorporate and after two to three minutes, it'll be nice and smooth and ready to go. And you can check the temperature and if it feels warm to the touch, go ahead and skip to adding your sourdough starter. No matter which method that you've used, just make sure that you blend it until it's nice and smooth, just like as if you used flour. While you're waiting for your mixture to cool, you can go ahead and grease up your dish. This loaf, because it has no starches in it at all, I find it doesn't rise quite as much as some of my other loaves. So it does need the support of something like this. So this one is a stone, but you can also use a metal pan if you like. You can use coconut oil or a vegan butter or regular butter if you're not completely plant-based. The other option is just to line your baking dish with parchment paper. It works perfectly well. The only thing is that you will it will leave kind of a little dent in the corners of your loaf, but that's okay. So once it's cool, then you can touch it with your finger and it doesn't feel hot. It just feels warm to the touch. Then you're just going to add in your active sourdough starter. I pre-measured mine. And you'll notice that it's thickened up quite a bit already. I'm going to add our binders. So I use white ground chia seeds and psyllium husk. If you can't process these, don't worry. You can always try using flaxseed or a different binder. And then we're just going to give it a quick blend. Just to incorporate it all and make sure to do this quickly as the binders will start to clump together if you don't. And there we go. You can see it's all incorporated. Give it a little stir. And then all we're going to do is just pour it directly in to our baking pan, our nice bread pan. And it's going to fill up probably to about halfway. Honestly, this is the hardest part. <laughs> it's not hard at all. It's such an easy and delicious bread. I think you're just going to love it. And it's so healthy for you too. Jiggle it. Then once you've got it nice and flat this way, you're just going to take a piece of plastic wrap and loosely cover it and leave a little bit of a gap there because sometimes it will rise right up and touch. So we want to now place this into a warm spot. So I like to put it into my oven with the proof button on. So it's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, but you don't have to do that. You can just leave the light on in your oven. That's another great way. And we're just going to let it rise until it almost doubles in height. Oh, I'm so excited. You can see it has definitely doubled in size and it is just perfect. So I've taken it out of the oven. I'm going to keep it warm and wrap it in a blanket. And I'm going to turn my oven up now and preheat it. I'll keep it nice and snug. My oven is preheated. So I'm going to go and place my bread into the oven. Make sure to remember to uncover it. I'm just going to mist it a few times with some water. In my excitement to film, I forgot to score my loaf. So please make sure to use a knife or a blade and just gently score your loaf right down the middle. Scoring it will allow it to have a more even beautiful rise. And then just place it into the oven. I recommend placing an oven proof dish with some hot water in it. This will give some steam to your oven, which will allow the bread to have an even better rise. Oh, it looks so good. And we're just going to let it sit here for just a couple of minutes. And then we're going to take it out and place it onto our wire rack. So now we want to take it out. So we're just going to flip it over and it should slide right out. If we left it in the pan, it would become really soggy because all of the moisture is still within there. Let it cool completely before slicing into it. I don't know if I'll be able to resist maybe 30 minutes or so and I'll get into it. And we have an absolutely gorgeous loaf of bread. This loaf is perfect for making sandwiches, toast, or anything that you would normally use sliced bread for. Okay, so I hope our bread is sufficiently cool. I'm just going to give it a slice. I'll slice it right in the middle here so we can see. Oh, look at that. It's just beautiful. And it smells so delicious. So this now is still a little warm, but you can see it didn't leave anything on my knife. So it cooled down enough and you could just slice it. It's just perfect for toast in the morning or for your sandwiches. 
That's, I, I like it nice and small like this because it is quite filling and it is a little more dense than the boules that I make and that's because there's no starches in it, but it tastes absolutely delicious. Once it's completely cool, then you can wrap it in some plastic wrap inside of a plastic bag and put it in the freezer or it'll stay fresh and delicious for at least two to three days. So I hope that you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Wow! So give my superfood blender bread a try. It will retain its shape, it won't fall apart, it will toast up beautifully, be super nutritious for you and your family and taste incredibly delicious. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and leave me a positive comment below. And for more videos like this one, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell to find out when my next video comes out.